1.3, solve linear equations. Our goal today is to solve linear equations. I'm going to start off with some properties that should look familiar. It's called the, for example, we have the addition property of equality. It says you can add the same thing to both sides. Similarly, we can add, we can subtract the same thing from both sides. We can multiply the same thing on both sides and divide on the same side. You can't multiply both sides by zero or divide both sides by zero. You can't multiply by zero because it makes both sides just equal zero. That doesn't do much for us. You can't divide by zero because you can never divide by zero. So we're going to solve our first equation. And I'm going to do it two different methods. Neither one is necessarily better than the other. One gets rid of fractions early. One gets rid of fractions at the end. If you don't like fractions, get rid of them early. So I'll do that first. I call it fraction busters. I look at this whole e equation and say to myself, what can I multiply the whole thing by to get rid of all the fractions? That means I look at the denominators and figure out what number is going to wipe out the denominators. In this case, it's 5. Multiply the first term by 5 and the 5 just goes away, and I'm left with 4x. Multiply 5 times the 8. Multiply the 5 times the 20. For a lot of you, you'd probably rather deal with this equation than the original one, because now there's no fractions. Solving from here, we're just going to use those four properties we just saw. We can subtract 40 from both sides. And divide both sides by 4. Or you could say multiply by 1 fourth. We get 15. If you don't want to get rid of the fractions, and you don't have to, we can start by just saying, okay, let's subtract 8 from both sides. At this point, we need to get rid of the 4 fifths. To get rid of a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal, by fourths. The reason we do that is all we'll be left with is x. 4 and 12 cancel out. Let's make 3. So now on the left side, hand side, we have x. On the right hand side, we have 15. You notice we got the same answer either way. Just personal preference on how you approach the problem. We're going to write and use a linear equation. During one shift, a waiter earns wages of $30 an hour. Well, no, not $30 an hour. $30 and gets an additional 15% in tips on customers' food bills. Right now, I think it's student to talk about 15% really being 0.15. That's how you convert a decimal to a percent, or vice versa. You just move the decimal two places. And we're told the waiter earns $105 total. So putting all that into an equation, we might say the total earnings is $30 plus 15% of the food bills. So 15% times the food bills. And we should, whenever we use variables, we should define those variables. We go on in the problem, it says the waiter earns $105 total. So we have to make sure we put that in the right place. We ask ourselves, is that the earnings or the food bill? And it's the earnings. 30 doesn't change, the 0.15 doesn't change, food bill, we don't know. So we're going to use order of operations and the four methods that we saw earlier to solve for B. After going through the proper steps, we see that the total food bill was $500. At this point, you can pause the video and do the guided practice now, or you can continue watching and do those later. So we've got a standardized test practice, multiple choice. We've got to solve the solution, seven, solve the equation, 7p plus 13 equals 9p minus 5. And it's just going through those same steps. I notice that there's a p on both sides of the equal sign, so I'm going to deal with that first then it should be an easier problem. 
going through my steps for solving an equation, I eventually see that P equals 9. I look up and hopefully find that. And there it is, choice D. It doesn't matter on that first step if you subtract 7P from both sides or subtract 9P from both sides. I chose to subtract 7P to keep my terms positive instead of negative. Because I make more mistakes when there's negative signs around. Next example is really the same thing, just getting bulkier and messier. Go through the same kind of steps, eventually get to your answer. You don't have to do things in a certain way as long as every move you make is a legal math move. I suggest you try this on your own before you look at my solution, see if they map. One thing that's worth pointing out, at the end I got 10 over 25. If I would have stopped there, that would be considered wrong because you always have to reduce <coughs> your fractions. Solve a work problem. Work problems are actually some of the hardest problems that you'll do in math, in my opinion. There's a formula we're going to use to find combined work. We know it takes one person eight minutes to wash a car, and it takes another person six minutes to wash a car. And we want to find the total time if we work together. Let's use a little common sense here first. A lot of people like to say, oh, eight and six, that makes 14 minutes to do it together. That makes no sense at all. If it takes you eight minutes to wash a car, and your friend six minutes to wash a car, doesn't it make sense that it would take you less time than Either of you do it alone. So together it should take you less than six minutes. And we're trying to find seven cars, so our answer should be less than six times seven. So it should be less than 42 minutes for sure. If our answer is not less than 42 minutes, we did something wrong. And the formula that we're actually going to use is rate times time plus rate times time equals total time. Our first worker uses one car in eight minutes. That's his rate. We don't know how long it takes out, so what we're trying to find out. And the friend uses one car in six minutes. And we want to find... I made a mistake up here. This should not have been total time. Total number of cars. We know our total number of cars is 7. So now we're supposed to solve for t to find out how much the total time is. Little t is total time. So we can start by multiplying everything by a number that will get rid of our fractions. Looks like 24 goes is something that 8 and 6 both go into. 24 and 8 cancel to make 3. So after 3t plus 24 and 6 cancel to make 4, 4t, 24 times 7 is 168. We now have some like terms. 7t equals 168, t equals 24. And the units for t were minutes, so 24 minutes. So again, when you're trying to find the total amount of time it takes to do a certain number of jobs, we use that formula rate times time plus rate times time equals total cars or total whatever, total lawns mode, total books read. You don't have to memorize that formula, you have to be able to know how to use it. At this point you can try these on your own or you can wait to do them later.